Hi there, it's Michelle from CNC Designs. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in New Zealand. And I just wanted to show you these cute little masks I made and I stamped on them. Because uh, pretty soon I'm going to be able to have classes in my home again. And I thought it would be a novel idea to um, give those coming to my classes a mask to um, wear if they wish um, while we're at the classes. And um, I knew that you could stamp on to non-porous items so I thought I'd give it a go and these are just some of the samples here and then I will um, show you exactly how I made the mask so um, as you can see um, there I've stamped right in the center and I've um, used stays on ink to do that and these are just some of the images that um, I picked up from the stamp sets I have some are retired like the little pig um, and then the free as a bird will be retiring so it's only available until june 2nd um, it will be disappearing and then we've got um, floral ones etc i've got more to show you after i finish um, the video um, and then ribbon and just some material i happen to have at hand so i will um, show you how to make a mask and explain how to do that and um, hopefully i'll inspire you to make your own cute little um, decorative masks to wear to stay safe during this time. Okay, so uh, let me just put these aside for a second. And I will show you. So what you need is you need um, a piece of material and it needs to be um, uh, tight woven or um, not even woven like this one. I think this is kind of like a um, faux suede type of material. I'm not sure what it is, um, but it needs to be, uh, so, you know, not, uh, so loose that, um, liquid or anything can go through there, but not so tight that you won't be able to breathe through it. Uh, and it also needs to be smooth. The area that you're going to stamp on needs to be smooth. So if you're using something that has, um, a bit of texture like that side's a bit more texture uh, it won't stamp very well but that's very soft and I thought that would be nice on the inside um, but the part you're stamping on so when you choose your material it needs to be something that you will be able to stamp on because it's nice and smooth and it has to be something if you want to use it as a proper protective mask uh, not a lot of um, uh, holes or you know give through it so not something like um, a towelette or something like that okay so what you do you start out with a piece um, I, I went online and looked at a few different mask designs um, and I decided to go with this one that has a little bit of sewing but you can hand sew it um, and so I modified the adjustments I saw I start with a piece that's about nine by um, five inches and that is about 12 and a half centimeters that way and 22 and a half centimeters this way. So start off with a piece like that. Um, and then you need to cut the corners off. So what you want to do is you want to measure about two inches, which is about five centimeters in from either corner. And I will just show you, um, so approximately two inches and just mark where you measure that. Um, I'm just using a pencil just to give me a little bit of a mark there so I know where I'm going to cut to. So I've marked two inches up this way, two inches that way, which is five centimeters. And then what you can do is you can draw a diagonal, but I'm going to show you how I cut it without using the diagonal. But if you're going to cut it by hand, you want a diagonal going from point to point. So you want to have a little diagonal mark. Oh, not sure you can see that. Um, I marked a diagonal line from that point to that point. And I'll do this side as well. So two inches down. It doesn't have to be precise because these are homemade and um, it's not like you're going making them to sell. So the two marks and then would do a diagonal. Now what I found, and you want it on all four corners, but what I found that worked really well for cutting it, because now you could just simply 
get your paper snips out or your other scissors and just cut straight across that diagonal. So from there to there, cut the corner off. But what I found worked even better, so if you have one of these, little guillotine, this was available free um, a few months ago during celebration. So I'm actually just putting it up, not sure oh, if you can see, but that line there and that dot there are the two dots I marked. So I didn't draw a straight line. I've just got the dot there and the dot there. And then I'm just going to hold it tight and go straight down and cut the triangle off. And so do it to the other side. This one I actually drew the diagonal line. And the reason I didn't use a dark pen is because this is going to be the side you're going to see. So you could do it on the other side if you want. Um, and then you won't see it. So we need four. So what you can do is once you get two done, simply fold it in half. And then you just cut the piece that's sticking out. So if you were doing it with scissors, fold it in half and then trace the straight line there and you've got the same um, area to cut. Or with the little guillotine, I can simply slide it in. Yeah, hopefully you can, it's hard to, hard to get this at an angle that you'll be able to see it um, because the little guillotine part's in the way. So I'm just lining up that line and pressing straight down. And so now I've got those two lines, straight lines there. And now I'll do the other side quickly. And as I said, it doesn't have to be precise. If you have a material that um, frays when you cut it, you will need to stitch around the edges or put some fray stop around the edges. Um, clear nail polish works to keep things from fraying, but my material doesn't fray. It's not a woven material at all, so it's not going to fray at all. Um, but if you have something that frays, you would want to stitch those edges down. Or like I said, put um, some fray stop or even um, clear nail polish to keep the threads from pulling out. But I've used one that doesn't have that problem. So now you've got your piece looking like this. And <clears throat> when it's like this, this is when you're going to want to stamp on it because once we do the next part, you'll have the um, the folds. So you'll have some pleats there, and if you try to stamp it with the pleats, it's the parts that hit the pleat are going to lose some of the imaging. So it's best to stamp it at this stage. And for this one, I have decided to use a stamp from the Painted Poppies set. So I'm using the one with all the little poppies. And when you stamp on something um, that you want it to be permanent, other than cards, you need to use stays on ink because these can be washed. The whole point of these um, fabric masks is they can be used and thrown in the wash and used again and used again. So if I use stays on, it's a permanent ink and so it can be stamped on um, non porous items and it will be permanently um, stuck on there. If you are using stays on with your stamping, you do want to use the stays on cleaner to clean off um, the ink from the image because if you don't do that, you'll have a permanent black staining on there, which is fine for the red rubber. But if you're using one of the photopolymer that's see through, quite often having the permanent black on there is difficult if you're trying to look through and line things up. So um, I'm going to get my cleaner ready so I can clean this as soon as I finish. So this is what I was talking about, the um, Stampin' Up uh, stays on cleaner. This will clean the stays on ink off of um, your stamps. And um, you want to be able to wash it off straight away as well. It's not focusing very well. There you go, stays on cleaner. All right. So let's get stamping. The stays on also, if you haven't used it before, it has a clear plastic lid and it does say do not discard so keep that plastic because this ink will dry out quickly so you don't want to leave the cover off like the other inks we can leave the cover off and quite often when I open it I just turn it upside down so I'll just pop that over there 
and it does dry very quickly so you don't want to leave um, too much time between inking it up and stamping. The other inks are much more um, wet, moist, so you can um, leave them for a while. So I always turn over, check, make sure I'm doing it on the correct side, roughly in the center. It won't matter when the mask is done and give it good pressure. Now I'm going to cover this up while I'm doing that because as I said you don't want to leave that open too long and you only actually have one go at this because it is permanent it's going to stay where you stamp it so good pressure all around because I can't see through it so I can't see what parts have gone down and what parts have not gone down so that's why I'm giving extra pressure and it is quite um, sticks, sticky, it sticks quite a lot. So like, see, it appears to have stuck there and you just peel it off gently. So that black has doesn't appear to have come off the ink, I mean off the um, stamp. And then there's my image there, nice lovely image there. Now, I'm just going to clean this quickly. It stains the top, this started out white, but it does stain the top and just a bit of a rub on there and you can see how hopefully you can see from a distance how um, the black is coming off so I just kinda I don't I'm not squishing it at all I'm just giving it a rub around normally I would take this and rinse it off in the sink which I can't do at the moment because I'm on video so I would just take my chamois and get it to soak that up so if you find any spots that haven't cleaned, there's a little bit there that hasn't quite cleaned, you can just simply rub a bit more cleaner on there. I usually rub it circular just so it can get right into the grooves. And we do sell, besides the stays on cleaner, we do sell the refills that go with it. There you go. Now that needs to be rinsed off in the sink as well, but that's good enough for now. Make sure the lid's on your stays on. So now that we have our mask prepared, um, prepped and stamped, then we need to um, do a couple things. Uh, I will be going off camera to iron it, but the first thing you want to do is come down about an inch and a half. So we want to come down about roughly an inch and a half. That's just gonna help give us the pleats. Okay, so an inch and a half on both sides, and I need to iron that through there. And then I will, once that's ironed, I will come down this side an inch and a half. So hopefully you can see I'm going to the one and a half inch mark. That would be seven and a half um, centimeters. And then I'm going to iron that part there. Okay, so I will go do that off camera, and I'll be right back. Okay, so... Iron that over and that gives you your creases. So you've got the top and bottom creases, okay? Now, at this stage, um, you just want to roll over the edge. So you want to roll the top over just to give you a, um, a nice uh, straight edge and then roll the other part over a bit. Now this part should be covering up some of your, um, some of the material there so you just roll it over a second time this is where the ribbons gonna go through so you want to have a big enough um, pocket to put whatever size ribbon that you're going to be using so I forgot to mention you will need um, some ribbon as well and I did my ribbon um, let's see three times 16 so uh, that's 32, 48. So I did about 48 inches. I'm not sure what that is metric. And I also had a couple, um, little, um, beads. That's so when you've got your, when you have your ribbon, if you pull it, it doesn't slip back through. You could just tie a really big knot at the end, but I tied a decorative bead and that keeps it from slipping back through. Um, the edge there. So you want to roll that over a couple times 
and then it helps if you iron that in place as well. So need to do that on both sides. You don't want it too far rolled over. You don't want it to come covering this completely because this part's going to be folded up. So you need to make sure that when you do roll over the edge that there's at least, you can see like a little triangle in there because each side will eventually be folded upward. Okay, so it's easiest if you iron those in place because the next part is a little bit of hand sewing. And I'll just go do that and be back. So there I folded those over and I ironed them. You just need enough to kind of hold it in place a bit. And as I said before, you can still see there's a bit of a um, space in there so this can fold back. So the next step is to stitch. So any thread, um, you know, something maybe to match the color you've got, or if you want to have a contrasting color, um, whatever thread. I just have a big thing of white thread. So a bit of thread. Um, I don't know how long that is. Uh, depends on your mask. So it looks like it's about 12 inches long. Um, so make sure you tie a knot in the bottom. And the first bit of sewing you're going to do is coming up from the side just straight stitch. It's quite easy. You can even do this if you have a sewing machine. You could just quickly um, whip it up. But I always hide the um, the knot on the inside and just straight back and forth. You could either do the stabbing or you could do the threading like that. So you could just go through that way and pull it through. You just need to um, stitch together both sides. So you just can have the little stitching there. So straight up there and straight up that side. And then there'll be one little bit of sewing left to do. So I'll be back in a minute and show you that. Okay, so once you have the side stitched up, so I'll stitch that side and that side, then um, on the inside, you want to fold back your um, flap, so to speak, the bits that have already been ironed. So you want to fold them back just a little bit, and then you want to stitch those in place. So I came back so far so I could still keep the needle and thread there, and then just simply a few stitches there just to hold that in place so it'll stay open. And then um, just come back on itself just to reinforce it. And I don't stitch it all the way to the edge because I don't want it to be pulling too much on that edge. So I've just stitched it like one stitch away from the edge. And then just coming back through. Back to where you start it. And then I will um, go down and do the other ones as well. So just to show you quickly how I've done this. I'm trying to go through the holes I've already created so I don't create too many holes on the edge there. Okay. So that's been stitched so that is now sitting up and so I will go and do that one there and the other side. So I'll show you those in a minute. Okay, so Let's see, let's see if it focuses. Okay, so I've stitched across there and then stitched up those two bits on both sides. So essentially you've got stitching straight across and then two little angles there. Okay, and that what stitching those two little bits there is what gives it the 3D um, effect so it holds it off your face and not as tight to your face. And um, that way there's only two pleats in the edge. So you don't really need to iron that part down depending on your fabric. You might, if you use a, a looser fabric that doesn't hold its shape as well. Now, um, I saw a few different videos on how they um, attach the mask. Some of them put um, just some string or elastic through each of those to hook behind around your ears um, or hair ties. I didn't really like that idea because I thought it might be putting too much pressure on the ears and um, my, um, I teach a parent and child class, so some of the people wearing these masks will be kids. And I just don't know how much um, 
uh, length to have on the side for that. So I like the idea of having a big long ribbon to use. Um, and I've seen a few masks done that way and I'll show you at the end of the video how it actually sits on your face. So that's why um, I did the long ribbon and um, when you put it through, the bottom is where you're going to want to loop and then the top is where you want the ends to be tied. So what I did is I turned it upside down and put it through one side. So there's a few ways you could do it. If you have a big eyed needle or um, maybe a um, bobby pin or a uh, uh, wire um, piece of wire um, paper clip, you could slip it through there and pull it through like that. I actually have a tool because I do um, sewing and stuff that goes through that holds it to pull it through bigger areas um, for the elastic. So if you haven't left a lot of space gap here, it might be more difficult to pull the ribbon through. I found that on some of my other ones, so I had to go with a smaller ribbon. So whatever you need to attach a hook on the end of there. Um, so a bit of wire would work. Might even need to tape it on the wire. So just slip it through the opening with the ribbon attached. I'm trying to pull that and not the ribbon. Okay. So the reason I started upside down and came that way is so the loop is now at the bottom. And that loops the part that will go around your neck. Um, it will tie above your head. So when you have that through, then your end bits, you could simply tie a knot. But this hole being that size, and the knot might slip through, and when you're pulling it to try to adjust it, you might accidentally pull it through and then have to re-thread it. So that's why I decided to use a bead. So again, using that large-eyed needle, um, stick the end through. So you have to have, make sure your bead has a big enough hole for you to pull it through. Simply pull it through. Once it's through the one end, just tie a knot to hold the bead in place. And again, depending on the size of your bead, um, if that hole in the bead's very big, it might slip through that knot. So I just do um, a knot on top of a knot just to make sure that um, it's thick enough to hold it in place. So putting that second knot right on top of the first knot makes it fatter. And also, depending on what you use, you could use cord if you want. Um, you might need to put some something on the end to keep it from fraying. But so now with that knot there, this bead's not going to slide off. Okay, and you don't, some people might want to put a knot there to hold the bead in place, but it doesn't really matter. The bead's not going anywhere. So let's do the other side real quickly, in case you didn't see that. So big eyed needle or something to pull it through, pull it through, and then a knot on top of a knot. So there's my first knot there, nice and tight. And see that knot so small that this would probably slide right through if I pulled on it. So if I pulled on that, it would probably slide right through because of the hole in the bead. So it all depends on what size. And these are just things I happen to have around. Now I am a very crafty person, so I probably have more things in my household than most people do. Um, but I'm sure you could come up with something. And so that's holding it in place. So there's our mask done. So fairly simple. And then you can just adjust it, you know, have it loose to get over your neck and then pull it tight to get around um, your neck. So with these, um, you could also color it. So you could color it with your blends pens. If you do color it with the Stampin' Blends, be aware that the black might come off because the stays on, um, the Stampin' Blends will make the black smear. Uh, or you could use um, other permanent pens to color it in or just leave it um, plain, depending on what you stamp on it. Uh, you might even want to stamp one with lots of words, you know, encouraging words and things like that. Um, so just to show you quickly how I've attached it, I didn't have a face, so here we go. Yes, it's a reindeer. So that's one, and I colored that one with blends, and so it loops around here. So that's the part on the neck, and then the top of the head, or the hair, you would tie a bow 
Of course, it would be a smaller bow because your head would be bigger than this, but that just goes to show. So the loop goes around the bottom and then you tighten up the edges and tie your bow at the top. And then you have your mask sitting there. It doesn't sit quite as nicely on my reindeer because his face is not shaped the right way. But when you do have it on your face, it will hold down um, tighter. If you want, you could um, sew in a piece of wire there to have it to adjust onto the nose. I've seen some of those done, um, but we're not, you know, uh, hospital grade here doing crafts. We're just stamping. So it's just something to keep on everybody's face so they're not breathing onto each other if we come in close contact um, during the level two. Um, uh, here in New Zealand, we will be able to have um, small groups of people together. So I'll be carrying on my craft classes because I usually only have about eight people. So that's how it looks on, and that one is colored um, with Stampin' Blends. Um, but some of the area is a bit dark because, as I said, the uh, stays on might come off if you're using the Stampin' Blends on there. But because it is stamped with permanent um, ink and um, pens, I will be able to wash this, and the ribbon is washable as well. So the other ones I did, so you saw me do that one. That's the um, painted poppies. And then we've got the dandelion wishes. I'll just try to put these here so you can see them. That's the dandelion wishes. And then what I showed you earlier, the free as a bird, lovely birds, beautiful. There's the free as a bird stamp. Then I did uh, this little piggy. So that's the one you make me happy. Some of these stamp sets, in fact, I think most of the stamp sets will be retiring. So there's this little piggy there. Uh, they'll only be available till June 2nd. So if you like them, I suggest you get out there and purchase them. If you do want to buy anything um, and you live in New Zealand, contact your demonstrator. If you don't have one, you can go to my site, michellecritchley.stampinup.net, uh, to order directly from me there. There's another, um, this little piggy, Hogs and Kisses, with a few little um, clouds. And then I've got Always Thinking, uh, sorry, Beautiful Day. It's a Beautiful Day stamp set. So I've got a butterfly and the flower. So my little reindeer was wearing this um, flower. Um, I think it's a magnolia. Uh, so I was wearing that flower and I colored it in pink. And then I've also got the butterfly. So this mask lends itself um, to nice big um, images. So there's the butterfly. Okay, and now what have we got? Oh. So this was a celebration stamp set. Little Ladybug, so it's no longer available, but you might have been lucky enough to get it um, during celebration. And so there I put the flower, but I thought it looked a bit empty. So I then also put the bee from um, the honey bee. So I put that little bee there. And this one here, I put the large honey bee. So there's the large bee there, same set, the honey bee set. And this time the flower is the daisy flower from Daisy Lane. Now this being red rubber, it, you can't see through it. So when I stamped the um, stem and then the flower, I couldn't quite see where I was going. So that just goes to show you that um, it didn't line up very well. But it looks quite nice with the two different things on the mask. And <clears throat> last but not least, I quite love the look at this one, the big magnolia. Now this one is from our Good Morning Magnolia set. See the size of that magnolia? It's really, really large stamp. So that lends itself quite nicely to cover the whole mask. So I hope you enjoyed seeing that, how to decorate your mask. So if you have to wear masks in public or even um, when you're attending events, um, outside your home. There are some ways that you can make a mask and decorate it so it's not so gloomy. So it looks um, cheerful and um, we'll all uh, get through this together.
I will be doing a blog shortly, um, so you can have a look at my um, paper craft addiction blogs, um, which will give the measurements, which I've already stated in here, but I will mention the measurements again on the blog. And below this video in the description, I will have the names and numbers of all these stamp sets that I've just shown you um, that I've used. The ribbon and the beads it just came from my own stash. We do sell ribbons at Stampin' Up, so you might be able to um, find some colors that you like there. Um, and the beads, uh, we do not sell those beads. So those are just ones I've had from um, years and years ago. So I hope you like that. Please give me a thumbs up and feel free to share this with anyone else. Uh, my only suggestion is make sure that it's a non-porous material that you use when you're making your masks because you don't want things to come go in and out. The whole point of that is to either keep um, uh, infection coming into your face also, it's to keep you from accidentally infecting others. And the other good thing is that um, just having the mask, even if you're not sick and the people you're around aren't sick, it just keeps you from accidentally touching your face or rubbing your nose um, if you've touched a surface that might have germs on it. So I certainly hope you enjoyed that. I've enjoyed making these. And um, if you are one of the ones that come to my parent and child class, please... Uh, Forget this video because this is supposed to be a surprise. All right. Thanks a lot. See you. Bye.